the theme at UFC 256 was a little bit depressing in the sense that we saw a lot of veterans lose and lose in dominant fashion, right? We saw JDS lose. We saw Tony Ferguson lose. Uh, we saw, who else do we see lose? Jacare Souza. He lost as well, got knocked out. And so it was kind of like, all right, this is the changing of the guard. Great. You know, you see some youngsters break through, but it was a little depressing to see, you know, veterans lose like that. On Saturday, final UFC event of the year, you were there in attendance cage side. Uh, it was actually the complete opposite. We saw the vets pick up big wins. Anthony Pettis, big win. Jose Aldo, big win. Wonderboy Thompson, big win. Now, Pettis and, and uh, Aldo, not exactly old timers, still in their early They're so 30s. young, it's crazy. But they've been around for 10 plus years. And Pettis, uh, excuse me, Wonderboy is about to turn 38 in February. So let me ask you this off the top. Of the older guys that won and look good on Saturday, who impressed you the most? Wonderboy. I mean, right? Wonderboy. I mean, once again, he was able to do what he's done on so many different occasions, right? Just provided a, 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 a puzzle that is so difficult to put together that guys look lost. I, I said this on the broadcast Saturday a few times. I said, guys end up taking pictures, right? They end up standing in front of Wonderboy, taking pictures. And that's exactly what happened to Jeff Neal. He wasn't able to keep up with Steven and... Stephen would hit him, create angles. I mean, by the time Jeff Neal was trying to figure out where to punch, Wonderboy would already be gone. You know, I do think that the story of Jeff Neal kind of got forgotten a little bit in the sense that Wonderboy won that fight fair and square. It was very dominant. Most significant strikes landed in his career in a single fight, uh, the eighth most in a welterweight fight. Jeff Neal, three months ago, had congestive heart failure. The guy was in the hospital, had, had, had just battled COVID. Like the fact that he was even there, the fact that he went five rounds with Wonder Boy, I know they don't count moral victories on your record on Tapology, but let's be honest, that was a moral victory for Jeff Neal. Wonder Boy oh, was the better man, but the fact that he went five rounds with Wonder Boy and never got finished, I was actually really impressed with Jeff Neal on Saturday. And also not, not quitting on himself, right? Because for the entirety of the fight, he was continuing to try to press forward and find ways to attack Stephen Thompson, which is very difficult in itself. You know, the, the <clears throat> Wonderboy Thompson is so difficult because not only is he a traditional martial artist, he's a guy that sets a lot of traps. He's also very big for the weight class, right? So when Jeff Neal's trying to approach, when Jeff Neal's trying to enter, Wonderboy's creating angles. And before you can even get your offense going, he's completely behind you. There were times where he was standing behind Jeff Neal when Jeff Neal's trying to throw punches. It was crazy. It's amazing because I feel like Wonder Boy has been put in this spot to be a stepping stone for younger guys as of late, right? Vicente Luque a year plus ago, Jeff Neal, even Darren Till in Liverpool. The guy won't go away. He's still very good. I don't know about, uh, I think you said he has the best takedown defense in welterweight history, which well, is just a listen, crazy listen. statement. I mean, well, one of the all-time crazy statements. No, here, <laughs> I mean, here, it was no, just here's wacky. The thing, right? So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because of this, Wonderboy Thompson is a striker. Yes. You understand that in order to beat him, you got to ground him. This happened to him early in his career where he got grounded out by uh, – I can't remember who it was, but Matt they Brown. Beat, Matt, Matt Brown. Brown. Rounded yeah. him out early in his career. So you kind of have a clear path to how to beat Steven Thompson. On the feet, he's so difficult. So everybody goes in with the idea that they're going to take him down. Nobody's been able to do it. Woodley was not able to hold him down for a sustained period of times. Um, high level wrestlers that he's competed with, high level grapplers, they can't take him down to implement that game plan. So when you do that and you look at the guy for his skill set, that is a massive statement that he has the third highest takedown defense among active welterweights. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I mean, it's 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 a great stat, although, you know, GSP, Kamar Usman, those are some. I mean, come on. Usman texted me during the event. He's like, yo, I'm sitting at 100%. Yeah. But I'm like, Usman, when was the last time somebody actually tried to take you down? He goes, That's fair. Damian Maya 15 times. I'm like, Damian Maya is trying to drag you to the mat. You're a wrestler. You shouldn't get taken down by James Damian Maya. But. I get what they're saying, but I'm talking about in terms of fighting style and your abilities are what you're supposed to have as abilities. Wonderboy's defense is top notch. Well, it's a good pick to that question, right? It's a good answer. My answer is actually Jose Aldo. I thought Aldo was done against Peter Jan. I said earlier last week, I still believe Cheeto Vera is going to be a champion. I really do believe he will fight for a belt and be a champion before it's all said and done. 
But Jose Aldo, man, this guy at, at, at 135, number one, it just speaks to just how good Piotr Jan is, the fact that he did that to him. Number two, lest we forget, earlier this year, it feels like 10 years ago, uh, Aldo probably beat Marlon Marais, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And so he comes back now and he beats Vera, who looks so good against Sean O'Malley. I'm not ready to, and, and, and he calls out TJ Dillashaw. I love that fight. We could get your take on that fight in a second. But if I'm to answer that question that I just posed to you, Jose Aldo is, is my pick because I honestly thought he was done after the beating he took against Piotr Jan. Well, the thing is this, right? He got beat by Piotr Jan, but early in the fight, he was very competitive. So it's mm -hmm. not like he didn't fight Piotr Jan even early. He got tired, and as he got tired, Jan kind of pulled away from him. So you saw spots in that fight where Aldo looked like himself, but on Saturday night, man, whew, those body shots he landed in the first round, the way that he moves his head, dips and throws, fantastic. And then to go and get that takedown in the third round when he needed it, to put an exclamation point in the judges' scorecards, beautiful. Yeah, Vera says he was a little too aggressive in that third round, got a little too excited. He'll be back, but to me, uh, just blown away by him coming back after that beating because that's the kind of beating that could change your career, yes? Absolutely. But when, let's go back to the main event a little bit, right? So okay. Jeff Neal and Stephen Thompson. Jeff Neal, you said three months ago he had... Congestive heart failure, sepsis. A month, a month after that, yep. he didn't train. So he's legitimately just been training for eight weeks because yep. for a month, he had to sit out and do nothing. So Jeff Neal going 25 minutes at the pace that they went at is something to hold up high and also deal with the adversity of the cut early off an accidental headbutt mm -hmm. that's difficult when you're in there with a sniper like Thompson who's just touching you on the cut over and over again. Yeah, I uh, want to give a shout out to Thompson as well because it appears as though he uh, he injured his knee, his right knee at some point in the fight. We don't know how bad it is, but after the fight, like right after, he was on crutches. So clearly he was in a lot of pain and the fact that he was able to move in that kind of pain with a compromised leg, very impressive. Now afterwards, DC, he called out Jorge Masvidal, he said, let's do NMF versus BMF. He didn't walk out with the NMF title. I was a little disappointed <laughs> in that. I mean, I gifted you gave it. Him that. I mean, yeah, it was like, it's kind of a big deal. It costs a lot of money. In any event, I kind of want to take it back at this point because it seems like he's a little <laughs> ungrateful. Uh, he beat Jorge Masvidal three years ago. How do you yep. feel about him calling out the guy that he beat? And are you interested in that fight? Well, now it's like call out Masvidal, right? You already got a victory over him. Guy's a massive star. So why yeah. wouldn't he want to fight him again? I mean, there are fights for Wonder Boy. I don't know if Masvidal is that fight because where does it get you? Plus, it feels like Masvidal and Covington is the fight to make right now because of where they are in their careers. But you got a Wonder Boy who has now beaten Luke, who had won se seven or eight in a row. Seven Luque, or eight in I a row. I think I won seven. Jeff Neal had won seven five. in a row. Five in the UFC. Overall, five yeah. in the UFC, right, but right. seven in a row overall going into the Wonder Boy fight. So these prospects that are on their way up fighting Wonder Boy Thompson, it's like a roadblock. So he needs to be in there with guys like, so you have Usman Covington, you have Masvidal. I mean, I don't, I really don't know because it's tricky, right? You, you burn guys trying to get him past Wonder Boy, but then you have Wonder Boy who's fought for the belt twice now. What do you do with him? A Magni, uh, a Michael Kiesa, a Damian Magni Maya type. Casey. To work his way back up, uh, I agree with you. Masvidal Covington How much work has to does be the he fight. Have to do right, like he just beat two dudes. He just beat two dudes that we identified as possible contenders. Luke has looked fantastic. Neil looked fantastic. Wonder Boy shut him both out essentially. So, how much work does he have to do in order to get a title fight against a Usman who he hasn't fought before? Woodley losing the belt was the best thing that could have happened for him because he's already lost to him twice. Or Drew with him twice and then yeah. lost one. So right. this is a great new landscape for Wonderboy Thompson. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.